Today we have invited a um, guest from England whose name is Phil Wilson. Yeah, he is a prospective musician who has just recently come to Belgium to write his first album. Could you tell us about the idea of your new album? Sure. Um, basically, uh, my release coincides with uh, another artist on the same uh, label, uh, a guy who goes under the name of Mount Judge. Um, so we've decided to create two separate albums on two CDs that will both be sold independently of each other, but will also be sold as a box set together. And if played at the same time on two different CD players, the albums will coincide together and can be played um, as one piece that changes every time you play it due to the small nuances in which one you press play on first and how many seconds you take to walk across the room to play that second CD. It'll always be in harmony, but it'll sound different every time. You are going to present in your albums together in the same place at the same time? We've taken a studio called the Red Gallery um, and we're going to be performing in two separate rooms at the same time. And we're going to be able to hear each other, but primarily the experience will be that an audience member will be able to walk between the two performance rooms, between my show and Tom's show. And just like the CD, the art will be kind of blended together. And depending on where a person stands within the show, they'll hear a unique remix. I, I'm really into this concept of remixing and allowing people to kind of tailor make their own experience how they want. So by moving around the space, um, they can take in different variances of, of Tom's work and my work and have their own unique balance and perspective on that. How did such an amazing idea come to your mind? Because I mean that, well, do you know Tom? I mean, did you, do you communicate somehow? It's, it's very strange. Me and Tom have never met, actually. Uh, Tom is Mount Judge and he uh, currently exists to me only in email form. He is someone who was signed to the label about the same time as I was signed uh, to Adult Teeth by Lewis. We both have met Lewis, we both know Lewis, so he is kind of our um, our, our, our pimp. He, he's the person that sat there kind of going between us, but we, we hadn't met. Um, and then when, when we came up with this idea of presenting two albums that work together, we sent a few communications between each other um, just to decide on what key to work in and that kind of thing. But other than that, we're largely independent. We're working very, very much on our own work. It's not that kind of collaboration. It's just two individual works that happen to synchronize. Yeah, and here are the next question. Are you going to meet? We're going to meet <laughs> at Christmas. Um, I, I go back home from Belgium on the 18th and we've kind of scheduled Christmas drinks to combine and iron out some of the details that really do need face-to-face -face mm -hmm. conversations. I'm asking that because perhaps you have different music background. Well, at the minute we don't really know each other's background. The one thing I do know, which kind of is a commonality of both of our projects, which is more coincidence than design, is we both got signed at transitional periods in our life. Uh, Tom has just moved from Glasgow, where he's been living for a long time, down to London. And obviously I've just moved from Hull over to, to Belgium, to Antwerp, to, to write. So I think that is something that's a, a, an interesting commonality, and one that we both hope to explore with, within the project, uh, this idea of transition. Another interesting question. If we want to buy your, your CD, your album, what's the name? Well, my album uh, is called Adapter. Now, Adapter kind of came up as a name uh, to me one day when I was having a shower, and as soon as it came into being, it became the only title for this album. It became definitive immediately because it says everything that I want to say about the album. Um, Adapter works on two levels. It works with its usage as a term for adaptation, as a term for change. Um, the idea of moving to a new place has been one of adaption for me. But at the same time, um, as you can see, my work relies very heavily on power and you have a power adapter, you have a transformer, you have something that uh, gives power and gi gives life to my instruments. So in that sense, Adapter was a very, very fitting uh, blend of the electronic and of the lifestyle. Um, Go ahead. Okay. By the way, could you explain the process of 
creating the music because you know many people they they have no even idea how much work the person has to do before we can just easily enjoy this music i play electronic instruments in the same way that a uh, viola player or pianist plays their instrument by which i mean rather than putting it all together in computers and assembling it um, one step at a time over a production period of weeks or months, I create everything spontaneously and live on the spot. So once I start, I start with no preconceived ideas. There's nothing loaded. There are no loops and samples in the traditional sense. Um, everything is a blank canvas. And then the way that I have everything set up, I can react to the audience or my mood or the situation around me to create something that's unique to that time. Well, you are talking about improvisation. Yeah. Yes. Let us imagine you have just finished your album and how are you going to present it? I mean, are you going to, to recreate it or how? <laughs> uh, we hit that one quite early on because Tom works in a similar fashion where things are created once. Um, so we, we talked about it and we decided that we would try to present to the viewer more of a, a feeling of what it might have been like to be here when the album was first created. So rather than attempt to recreate the exact nuances of the album, we would pick certain things like the same sound sets, the same drums, the same um, key that we were working in. But we'd begin again afresh, composing for the first time a, a new improvised set. So. When we sit down in our two separate rooms on the opening night, we're both going to know what key and for how long. But beyond that, we have no further idea of what will happen and we, we're going to have to listen very closely to each other to make sure that it stays on the right side of chaos. So you can record this presentation and make another complete album. Exactly. Right? And to be honest, that's been a big part of my working process um, from the last few years up until the present day. I have my uh, recorder with me at all times when I'm working musically. Uh, everything gets captured in its most pristine, straight from the mixing desk, so there's no audience applause or that kind of thing booing. Um, and that allows me to take whatever I've just composed and upload it to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Phil Wilson. And um, there, there's kind of a, a pool of every improvisation that I've created in the last two or three years there for people who are interested in my work to go and sift through. I put the good and the bad there. I put the mistakes and the times where things don't work there. So that becomes almost like a, a diary uh, as an archive to the performances that I've done in the past. Because beyond that, there is no performance. There's no going back to those moments. So that's, that's quite interesting for me, you know. Okay, and about how how is your album, how is it going to be released? I mean that, well, you have two separate CDs, so do, do you have to, to name it somehow, to give it the common name? Well, one of the really nice things about working with this label is Lewis has been very, very supportive of all our intentions um, to create this product, and he's, he's helped us as, uh, at every stage to define what that product is and how it can best be sold. So we've come up with a very, very simple logo. Um, there's one for myself, there's one for Mount Judge. They both share common elements. They're both circular by design. They both have a common background. They both steal each other's fonts. I have my own font, Mount Judge has his own font, and we've decided to use each other's fonts for our album titles. So small things like that kind of suggest rather than force this idea of this is two works that are a one. It really just acts as a subtle invite that if you get it, you get it. If you notice this and you want to explore that, then that's there to explore. So it's kind of, it's like a treat. I like this idea of, of, of leaving small elements behind that other people will maybe apply their own logic to. I don't really like the idea of forcing too much uh, information on somebody. The music's the music and what they take from it is, is unique to them. So. I think that's quite nice to, uh, to have that follow through into the production methods and the release methods for this album. Um, so it's going to be available as a, as a box set and I think we will prepare something that ties it together physically 
but beyond that, I don't think there's there's any need for a third title to sit over what we're doing. I think it's kind of it is what it is. Uh, okay, I think uh, most of the people is wondering how this kind of music really sounds. Can you show us a premiere of your music? Mm. Ah, that could work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me just. Um, I've I've done a few bits and pieces for soundtracks of, of things. I soundtrack to video games convention, strangely enough, and there are uh, numerous other works I've got coming out in the next six months that have that kind of blend of working with other artists that are interested in the visual kind of aspect of doing music videos and that kind of thing. And I hope one day to um, maybe go back to the album that I'm making currently and add a uh, visual element to each of the tracks. How did your moving here from England influence you and your album? That's very interesting because because it's instinctive and it's composed on the spot. Um, the, the influence is complete. It's by being here has changed everything, every element of the album. Um, the selection of instrumentation that I've used is bound by the luggage space that I had available to bring these instruments with me. So. At home, I would have probably chosen different instruments completely. Um, I'd have certainly been um, on a different power system, so the different voltages provide different hums that sort of are in the background of the album. Uh, I'm very interested with this idea that there's no such thing as... Or there's no desire to me to have a particularly perfect signal, to have no hiss or hum. I quite like hiss and hum, and there's a lot of it on the album, so... That's all changed by the voltages that, that are involved in being here. Uh, so it, it's changed on a very profound and fundamental level by being in Belgium. Um, and beyond that, just having a creative space that's very different to, to home. Home has a lot of distractions. Home has friends and bands and a, a, a very different life that I'd been part of before this album existed. Whereas really I came here and I started writing at the same time. So this album has had its own unique environment to be wrote in and I, I think that kind of comes through quite a lot and I think also it, it is probably similar for, for Tom moving to a new city just provides you with a wealth of opportunity to go and see things in a different way and see things as an outsider so it, it's possibly reflected as, as being kind of an outsider album Thank you very much No problem Thank at you all. for coming Thank you very yeah. much, it's been great